Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton-Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. This lesson is about simple and compound interest. This is the starting point for chapter nine out of uh, the Turton textbook on process design. Uh, the chapter is entitled Engineering Economic Analysis. So our basic terminology, you've probably seen this before. P is either the principal value or the present value of an investment. F is the future value of that same investment. We're going to invest it for a number of years in, and we're going to do this at an interest rate of I. Now this interest rate is based on the same time interval as N, so I, it might be annually, but it actually could be, say, monthly or you know maybe every 10 years they're going to collect interest. If you're doing this on an annual basis, frequently we list it as being an interest rate is like 8% PA, meaning per annum or per year. The premise here is that when we invest money, the money should be earning money. So a dollar today is worth more than a dollar of the future because I should have been earning interest on that money. So we'll start with simple interest. The interest paid in any year is just simply the principal times that interest rate. Um, this interest rate is a fraction of the investment that you would pay as interest in a year. And if you do this simple interest over a number of years in, then you would take the principal times the interest rate times the number of years. Your total investment, therefore, would just simply be the initial amount P plus the amount of interest earned over those N years. For a single year, this is the one that's going to be most helpful to us, N is equal to 1, so P plus P times I is my future value after one year, or P times 1 plus I. Now the reason people don't really use simple interest other than like in friendly family loans, something like that, is that the interest that you still owe somebody ought to be earning interest also. So therefore people developed compound interest. Initially, let's say we have a value of P dollars that I have invested. At the end of that first year, so the future value after one year, is that principal times one plus I. But if I'm going to, over the next year, earn interest on that amount, then the value after the second year is the amount I had at the beginning of that year, F1, times one plus I. Of course, that's just the initial principal value times one plus I squared. And if I continue doing this for N years, after N years, the future value is the principal times one plus I to the N power. Frequently, we would like to go the other direction. And so if I know the future value, I would divide by one plus I to the N power in order to get the principal value or the present value of that future investment. So let's look at a simple example here. And we want to know how much we need to invest at 8% per year in order to have $10,000 in five years. So in this particular case, what we have is we have an annual interest rate of 0.08 my time is five years, and I want to have $10,000 in five years. So this is the future value is 10,000. And what I want to know is how much do I need to invest today? So I'm looking for the principal value or the present value. So the formula says I'm gonna take the 10,000 Divide it by 1 plus 0 0.08 raised to the fifth power. And in this particular case, the answer is $6,805.83. Now I do want to take these to kind of crazy sig figs because 
Think of this like a bank balance. You don't really want someone to lose track of my pennies, right? Because over time, if every time people just threw out the pennies that I had in my account, I could have, over the course of my life so far, lost a lot of money due to just those pennies. So we're gonna actually keep track of what's gonna look like ridiculous sig figs. As long as I'm doing things assuming a specific dollar amount is needed at, as $10,000, $9,999 is not going to be enough to buy that $10,000, you know, I don't know, car, motorcycle, whatever. So therefore, I really do need to have $10,000. I don't want to just round this to the nearest value because that may not actually give me the number I'm looking for. So when we're doing things that are truly about like banking concepts, we're going to keep all the sig figs. When I'm doing things that are cost estimates, I'm going to use rational, reasonable, significant figures. Occasionally, we will have things where the interest rate changes from year to year. In real life, this would be the case. In which case, all you're going to do is multiply by 1 plus the interest rate for that year, and you do that every year throughout the life of the loan. We also can deal with compound interest that happens not annually. Okay? So we will call the annual interest rate, what you're quoted, as the nominal interest rate, okay? M is the number of times per year that the interest is compounded. So frequently it might be, say, monthly. So M would be 12 times per year. The interest rate over a single compounding period is that nominal rate divided by M. Now, it's frequently handy to calculate what the effective interest rate is based on this compounding more frequently than one year. So the effective interest rate can be determined by just looking and seeing what would happen if you just did this investment over one full year. <laughs> so that would be for one year, F1 is the principal or the present value times one plus the effect effective interest rate. But as far as what I'm actually doing based on this nominal rate, every month or whatever time period it is, I'm doing the nominal rate divided by M as my rate. And I'm doing that M times. So this would be the principal or present value times one plus the nominal rate over M to the nth power. And I can take this and just algebraically solve for the effective interest rate, <coughs> one plus I nominal over M to the nth power minus one. I think that this is a really important formula to keep in mind because if you have compounded interest, it's going to be easier to work problems as if they are annual. And so you can use this to turn any problem into something where you just treat it based on annual rates. So let's look at another example here. This time, we're going to be investing $1,000 at 8% per annum, but we're compounding monthly. And we want to know how much we have at the end of a year. We want to know what's the effective interest rate. And we want to know how much we would have at the end of 10 years. So let's just translate this problem into, you know, uh, symbols. So I have starting value of P is $1,000. My nominal interest rate is 0 0.08. M is 12 because I'm doing this monthly. All right. So the first question is, what do I have after one year? So the future value for a one-year investment is $1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 to the 12th power. And this is 
$1,082.9995. Okay, this one we'll call it $1,083. Okay, then what's the effective interest rate? Well, the effective interest rate is simply this 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12 to the 12th power, which is going to be 8.3%. The next question is how much do you have at the end of 10 years? And I can do this in two ways. One is to use a formula directly that says, well, I started with $1,000 the interest rate is 0 0.08 over 12. I'm doing this for 10 years, but 12 times per year. So multiply 10 times 12. And I get 2,219.64. Another way that I really recommend if these formulas just don't really settle well with you is that instead we do it with the effective interest rate. And so if I do it with the effective interest rate, I'm going to put the effective interest rate in and then just take it to the 10 years power. And in this case, I get exactly the same amount. So it doesn't matter which thought process you wish to go through. I do find that people have a little more success if they work the problems this way. But again, it's a matter of personal choice. Finally, we want to talk about continuous compounding. Now, I found that I had a typo in my slide here. Um, as the number of times I compound the interest increases, so if I do it every quarter, or then every month, or then every week, or every day, the effective interest rate increases the more frequently that I compound my interest. So if you want to know what the limit is as m goes to infinity, uh, this is going to be the continuous compounding interest rate. And in this case, what you're going to get is that the effective interest rate is going to be, well, the formula where I take the limit as m goes to infinity of 1 plus i nominal over m to the nth power. And if you use L'Hopital's rule, there's a derivation in the textbook if you wish, what we find is that the effective interest rate is the exponential of the nominal interest rate minus 1. So this concludes our lesson on simple and con compounded interest. We're going to be looking at some other ways that we can apply this for some practical engineering problems in our next lesson. Thank you.